Hi, hello and welcome back to another video of Medwits Made Simple. This is about the medical meme contest. The last day to submit your meme is August 30th, which is day after tomorrow. So hurry up and send me your meme. The details of this contest is given in the description of this video. Go check it out. And uh, the top 10 memes will be shown on my YouTube channel. And you'll get a shout out for that. So as a part of uh, the nephrology lecture series, in this video we're going to see about minimal change disease. Now let's begin. Minimal change disease is a disease which manifests as nephrotic syndrome. So I've already made a video about nephrotic syndrome and I've attached that video in the comment section below in this video. So if you haven't watched that video, please go and watch that first and then come back to this video. Minimal change disease uh, is a disease which is caused due to effacement of food processes of protocytes. Now this is the line which you see in almost all the pathology textbooks. Now I'll tell you what this really means. Effacement basically means thinning out of food processes of protocytes. So, as you all know, um, there are protocytes surrounding the glomerular capillaries and they form food processes uh, which, which, which involves in the barrier function of the glomerular capillary wall. And what happens here is that uh, there will be thinning and uh, uh, kind of the, the food process of protocytes loses their function as being a barrier. And th this will progressively lead to nephrotic syndrome, okay? And this is most commonly found in children. So this picture is taken from Wikimedia. So as you can see here, these green structures which are seen here are the podocytes. The podocytes are also known as visceral epithelium. Uh, and as you can see here, you cannot clearly see the food processes of podocytes. All these uh, seem to be fused together, but they're actually not fused, okay? So it's a confusion. Like initially people thought that the food processes get fused together and that's the pathogenesis of um, minimal change disease, but that's not the fact. What actually happens is that the food processes are thinned out or they become lost and it appears as if they are fused together, but actually they are lost and they become swell up and they, um, they are actually thinned out and that's the pathogenesis of minimal change disease and this will lead to defective uh, glomerular wall barrier and this is what leads to nephrotic syndrome so as i mentioned earlier uh, minimal change disease is due to diffuse effacement of food processes of podocytes uh, so but uh, apart from that, the glomeruli looks normal in light microscopy. So if you're going to do uh, uh, PAS staining or HNE staining staining uh, of the renal sample under light microscope, the glomeruli will look normal and you cannot find any pathology under light microscope. So, so how are you going to see the effacement of food processes and those changes? There's only one way. you got to do electron microscopy and then in that you can see the diffuse effacement of food processes but that's not feasible right like many of the centers don't have access to electron microscopy so in those kind of situations it's, it's basically a uh, clinically diagnosis the patients are clinically diagnosed uh, rather than being uh, sent for any investigations so unlike the other conditions such as membranous nephropathy which led to nephrotic syndrome here in minimal change disease, there are no immune complex deposition in the uh, nephrons. So that can be proved by immunofluorescence. So immunofluorescence microscopy, as you all know, is done by using immunofluorescence staining and that will stain the immune complexes as green in color. But in this case, in minimal change disease, when you do immune, immunofluorescence microscopy, you will not find any immune, immune complex deposition and that will rule out um, the other conditions which lead to nephrotic syndrome such as membranous nephropathy. So if you, uh, if you want to know more about membranous nephropathy, I have already made a video on that. You can check that out too in the comment section below. So the scientists believe that uh, there is some kind of immunologic basis associated with minimal change disease and these are proved by various facts. So this includes um, the minimal change disease occurs uh, most commonly in children following a episode of a respiratory tract infection. So 
they think that there is some association um, of immunologic basis in children in nephrotic uh, in minimal change disease. Okay, and the second fact which proves it is that the children with nephro um, minimal change disease have dra uh, show dramatic response to corticosteroids. So if you're going to treat a child with uh, child with co uh, corticosteroids, if the child has minimal change disease, there's going to be uh, there's going to be a dramatic response. So the child's going to improve so much. Okay. And they also found a few HLA haplotypes, uh, which are commonly seen in the individuals with minimal change disease, which are associated uh, with atopy. Atopy, as you all know, is a uh, condition such as asthma and all that. So all these uh, factors confirm that there is some immunologic basis underlying minimal change disease. So now let's about the morphology part. So if you've been watching my video thoroughly, uh, you would have... Uh, already made up the fact that the glomeruli um, looks normal in light microscopy. I've told that fact earlier already, right? So, if you want to see the findings clearly, you need to do electron microscopy, which is not feasible in many of the cases. Uh, so, if you do electron microscopy, you can see the effacement of food processes, as I've shown the picture earlier, how it looks like. So. Uh, imagine the same picture that the cartoon representation in black and white and that's how you see um, the electron microscopy picture of effacement of food processes okay just uh, just rewind the video or watch it once again after this video is over uh, when it comes to that point um, when you see that uh, cartoon representation uh, the graphic representation of uh, uh, minimal change disease just imagine that picture in black and white and there you go that's how the minimal change disease affected kidney looks like on electron microscopy and uh, there will be no immune complex deposition in immunofluorescence microscopy so in in all these cases you'll be finding that in many of the renal pathologies you'll be doing all these three microscopy you'll be having points on all these three because uh, in light microscopy obvious changes will be seen by just uh, light microscopy and that's kind of simple and easy technique to be done anywhere and it's cheap but uh, electron microscopy uh, is not so easily accessible and many centers cannot afford it and for a research purpose maybe um, it it is kind of feasible and if you have access to electron microscopy it's so easy to find uh, most of the renal pathologies and immunofluorescence microscopy is another technique which is kind of feasible uh, to do in many many centers uh, and it will help you to find out uh, immune complex deposition and all that because most of the cases associated with nephrotic syndrome such as membranous nephropathy and many other diseases on which we'll be talking about in our lecture series uh, are diseases which are associated with deposition of immune complexes in the glomeruli and there are various sites on which they deposit such as subepithelial deposits or endothelial, subendothelial deposits and there are so many I will be talking about them so stay tuned for that so now let's see about the clinical features of minimal change disease. This is most common in children at the age of about 2 to 6 years and they manifest as nephrotic syndrome. So many people have this confusion that nephrotic syndrome is a disease but it is actually not a disease by itself. Nephrotic syndrome is a manifestation of some other renal disease. Okay, So the patient may have membranous nephropathy and they will manifest as nephrotic syndrome. The patient may have focal segmental glomerular sclerosis and they manifest as nephrotic syndrome. So nephrotic syndrome um, is also a manifestation of minimal change disease. So when you find out the patient has nephrotic syndrome, the next thing is to find out what's the cause of nephrotic syndrome. Okay. So once again, I'm telling you, if you haven't watched that video on nephrotic syndrome, which I made earlier, uh, it's a good video. You can watch it in the comment section below. Go to the comment section. You can see the link over there. Just click it and watch it. So the triad, the triad of symptoms which occur, so symptoms or the features which occur in nephrotic syndrome are massive proteinuria, which is more than 2 grams per day, uh, generalized edema, which is also known as anosarca, and hyperlipidemia, which may be accompanied with uh, lipiduria. The treatment is 
uh, by corticosteroids. So the most interesting fact is that most children, most of the cases, about 90% or more than that, uh, respond very well to corticosteroids. So there is rapid improvement. Children respond very well than adults. So uh, even though I told you that nephrotic uh, minimal change disease is common in children, there are chances that this may occur in adults too. And in that case, uh, when you compare uh, the prognosis uh, of minimal change disease in children and adults, children respond very well than adults to corticosteroids. There may be relapse in few cases, but even though after that, when you give corticosteroids, they'll be uh, responsive. But on, on long-standing treatment of corticosteroids, what may happen is that some may become corticosteroid dependent or resistant. So they have to be uh, on corticosteroids. So if, they, if you stop corticosteroid on them, uh, they'll be having a lot of difficulties and they'll become corticosteroid dependent. Or in a few cases, there will be resistance. Okay, So uh, they'll reach a point uh, beyond which corticosteroids may not act on them and there are a few strategies to overcome that like you can improve the doses of corticosteroids and you can try various other um, things but the basic thing which you need to know regarding treatment of minimal change disease is that the patients are massively responsive to corticosteroids and that's the thing you need to know overall prognosis is good and that's a good thing because it's not like the other conditions uh, where you give um, so many treatment but relapse is very common and treatment of relapse becomes difficult but here it's not the case prognosis is good in the case of minimal change disease so if you like this video please leave a like that means a lot to me and leave your comments in the comment box below that will make me so happy and share this video to your friends and uh, um, help them too. So once again I'm reminding you of the meme contest. Uh, check out the details in the description of this video. So if you like this video and you want me to make more videos like this, please visit www.patreon.com slash made simple and um, you can donate uh, any amount. You can donate even a smaller amount and that shall be uh, useful for me. And once again, if you haven't liked this video, please leave a like, comment your suggestions below and subscribe to my channel, press the bell icon for more videos. Thank you.